niliposikia madaktari watakucha ubande wa Litain Center katika hospitali kutipu macho nikasema ni lazima niende basi nikaonyesha chicho langu likaonekana chicho langu limevivia kwa kweli na tena imekwisha hata alafu sasa wakaanza kutipu waka wakatoa ile kitu kilichosuia nisione nikifunika hii ninawaona sasa ninyi ninaona naona vizuri asante sana they could not see now they do An estimated 285 million people worldwide are visually impaired. Yet 80% of these cases are due to causes which could have been prevented or treated. There are 39 million blind people worldwide and 246 million with low vision. 90% of the visually impaired people live in developing countries. Year in year out individuals families and communities continue to spend substantial income towards managing the economic burden of blindness and visual impairment at the expense of better livelihoods There are three types of blindness there is a blindness that is uh, reversible there is blindness that is preventable and lastly and least is the blindness that is neither preventable nor reversible poverty and blindness are believed to be intimately linked with poverty predisposing to blindness and blindness exacerbating poverty by limiting employment opportunities or by incurring treatment cost the world health organization has identified five conditions cataracts refractive errors trachoma river blindness and congenital eye ailments as the main causes of 75% of all blindness cases cataracts account for over 50% of all the cases that end up blinding many people simply because they cannot access simple surgical services additionally other eye conditions like glaucoma and diabetic retinopathy are emerging as potential threats to the status of sight Research indicates that over 65% of diabetics who end up diagnosed with diabetic retinopathy had no knowledge that they had it. Eastern Africa presents itself as a region of great potential and a place of many opportunities. Just like populations of many other developing nations, the residents here have their fair burden of eye diseases. a situation further compounded by shortage of well-trained ophthalmic manpower adequate facilities and lack of quality eye care services it is against this background that east africa college of ophthalmology iaco was founded in 2005 one of the things that was uh, in response was that first of all they there were very few ophthalmologists the training centers within this region were very few then when looking at the situation and the training centers within the region they did not have the ideal setup and capacity to train with donor support from European Union Light of the World and Sight Savers IACO together with its five founding members University of Nairobi Kenya Tanzania's Kilimanjaro Christian Medical Center and Muhumbili University of Health and Allied Sciences, Uganda's Makerere and Barara University of Science and Technology launched an ambitious project that would steer promotion of quality ophthalmology practice in Eastern Africa in 2005. Yako brings together ophthalmologists in the eight Eastern African countries coming from Ethiopia down to Malawi. Uh, its main reason for existence is mainly standardization and harmonization of ophthalmic eye care education, uh, especially of ophthalmologists in those countries. Vision 2020 goes ahead and identifies uh, or rather works around three main components. The two important ones in our view uh, have been human resources for health and uh, infrastructure development of course the third being cost effective disease control the key areas that we need to look into include um, 
identifying the specific diseases in our country and we have rightfully done so. Then we provide the appropriate infrastructure within the service delivery to enable, enable uh, treat those who are blind and prevent uh, blindness. IACO's mandate is to contribute to human resource for health through quality training in ophthalmology, set standards for professional ophthalmic practice, facilitate continuous professional development, contribute to policy development, and promote research which advances ophthalmology in the region. Our curriculum was guided by, by IACO uh, some basic equipment for teaching and administration uh, was received from IACO at the start and uh, of late we have received funding which has enabled us to put up uh, an eye department which is nearly complete. IACO is supporting three students at present and also for research funds. Well IACO is supporting me for the for the tuition fees for the my uh, five time of the course for postgraduate quality training demands quality learning materials and equipment we have received office equipment and eye equipment in terms of surgery and in terms of diagnostics though iaco establishment is informed by similar initiatives including the medical colleges in south africa and united kingdom the institution's aims are to address the unique needs in Eastern Africa. In the process, I've also got partnerships with Royal College of Ophthalmology, which has similar function like ours in the UK, and they have helped us both in training on curriculum and also in fellowship examinations. The outreach services, they take the services to the community and increase the accessibility to eye health care. It's also an opportunity for the trainees to have hands-on experience in field work. The success rate has been close to 100%. For the training ophthalmologists, the experience is equally fulfilling. We gain a lot of hands-on experience um, and also the satisfaction um, that the patients that we see are able to regain their sight. It's really satisfying to see a patient who was blind yesterday being able to see. Patients no longer have to either wait for long periods to be attended to by few subspecialists or go to hospitals outside the country for specialized treatment at very high costs, thanks to the European Union support to IACO's promotion of quality ophthalmology project. The success of eye care practice in the region is dependent on IACO's ability to build fruitful links for the partner institutions with other universities in the developed world and works to ensure her member universities utilize the links. There has been far too little research conducted in the Eastern Africa region focusing on eye health. No viable specialist should go out and claim they are excellent if they do not spend some time doing some research. We have literally no database. We don't have serious research that has taken place in the department. So I felt we needed to fill in that gap. And without the skills of how to do research, it was not going to be workable. Definitely we have seen improvement and we continue to improve the infrastructure and development equipment and also the trainers themselves have been improved. For eye care to succeed, we need to integrate into the, the, the general public health system, the uh, public health system, which involves service delivery, you know, and human resource development. We shall continue um, building evidence for um, practice and policy change. Um, this too largely uh, depend on how much evidence is generated uh, from research, uh, which we, we shall continue doing. We are looking at where IACO Fellowship becomes a licensed practice of thermology in the region. Though IACO so far can look back with pride at the strides already made, courtesy of support by various donors, eye health still remains low on the priority lists of most national health plans within the region. And more still needs to be done so that eventually eye health for all in Eastern Africa can be a reality.